What's going on everybody? My name is Alonso. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm located here in beautiful sunny California and right behind me we have a perfect spot for a semi-permanent tree net. We're going to be going over how to set one of those up step by step. This video is going to cover how to set up the perimeter. But first, let's go over everything we need in order to do just that. Here we go. First thing is first, the most obvious thing to any tree net, of course, is our perimeter rope. So for the perimeter rope, I like to use anything that's really static. You don't want to use dynamic rope for this. And also, I like to use something at least 10 millimeters in diameter to get that extra strength and durability. You don't want to skimp on the cost on the perimeter net, mainly because this is what's holding your people up when they are on the tree net. And also, you want this tree net to last many, many years. So get something good, guys. I'll put some recommendations down in my bio. This is key. Let's move on to the next thing. You don't want your static rope to be able to slide up and down these trees. You want it to stay in place where you set it for the remainder of its life. And in order for that to be the case, you need something to secure it to the tree. And for that, I like to use lag screws. Uh, I got these at Home Depot. Now, uh, what I do with these, I actually install these on the back end of the tree. There's a common misconception that these, that these go on the front of the tree and your rope goes through them, like here. That's not the case. These aren't holding your tree net onto the trees. These just secure it from sliding up and down. One note I want to make on these, you don't want to get zinc because zinc is just going to corrode and it's just not going to be as good in the elements. Now this is a black coated steel. I normally use stainless steel, but our tree net owners here wanted something black and we are appealing to our customer in this case. So these are 7 16 by 5 and a quarter. Uh, they're about five bucks a piece. So if you're using a three anchor point tree net like the one here that we're going to make, it's only about $15. Now on that note, I want to make an extra note. Now, in order to keep our tree net for a really, really long time, we want it to be friends with the tree. We don't want, we don't want the tree and the tree net to hate each other. We want them to coexist in peace. In order for that to happen, the tree needs to be very healthy, still needs to be able to get its nutrients and all that good stuff. And for that, we need Tree Pro. Now, all this does is create separation between the rope and the tree so that the rope doesn't choke the tree and not allow it to grow. Now, if you don't use this, the rope will eventually dig its way into the tree and it'll create this really ugly, unpleasant view. And these, in my opinion, look really nice. And, you know, it really doesn't cost much to use these. I just go look for some nice pine wood, cut it into little six inch pieces. And then I clear coat it so that it lasts in the elements a long time. Sometimes I'll wood stain depending on what the environment wants, but uh, for this specific tree net, I'm clear coating and you can do this ahead of time. So tree stuff guys, uh, quick recap, some lag screws and some tree pro. Don't forget these things. They are gonna be crucial to setting up any tree net in any future situation. Continuing with the theoretical setup of the tree net, we've now got our, our lag screws placed behind our trees and we are ready to thread the rope around the trees and through those lag screws. So, when you thread your rope around the trees and you tie your knot, you're gonna notice that if you try to pull it, if you really try to pull your rope and then tie your knot, you're just not gonna get a lot of tension. And this is one of the hardest parts of tree net building, but also one of the most important parts. And in order to make sure we have the, a good amount of tension on our static rope, in order to be able to weave and not lose a ton of surface area for when people are hanging out, I like to use pulleys. So, these are my pulleys. These I use for slack lining. These are the rad pulleys. <laughs> but yeah, so you wanna use something where you're gonna be able to get a good amount of tension. You have different options here. You know, you can use ratchets, you can use pulleys, 
You just want to make sure that you can get a solid amount of tension on your rope and be able to release them out of the system after your knot is tied. And on to the final things. When you're installing the lag screws, you're also going to need one of these guys. Just your basic power drill with a with the with the proper size drill bit. Now, um, these lag screws call for 1164th inch drill bit. That's what I've got here. This might actually be a little bit bigger because when you're in harder wood, you don't want such a tiny, tiny hole because then it's really hard to torque them in. And then you also need something to actually torque them in because with your hand you just you can't quite get them in there so for that I like to use the back end of this hammer now you just put this in the hole of the screw and you can twist it in there are lots of different things you could use you could use a you could use a pipe for leverage you could use a screwdriver for leverage just make sure you have something that'll give you the leverage you need to be able to torque your lag screws into your tree and that's it on that one guys now seriously the final things so the last things I like to have on hand, even though I don't use them all the time, is a nice crow slash pry bar. I have uh, just this little basic red one, nothing super fancy, and some wood screws. Now, here's where you might find yourself using these, or at least really wishing you had them. If the tree that I'm trying to wrap my rope around is just a really awkward angle, and it's the rope isn't wanting to stay on the on the tree pro I might have to do something weird with the rope where you know it might slide off a little bit at first but once it gets on tension it's good but if it ever slides off of the tree pro I can go in with this with this crowbar under the rope and just pull the rope enough just a little bit just to get it back onto the tree pro that's those are examples of what I've used now you want to be careful because crowbars have some sharp edges you don't want to get those sharp edges on your rope you want to make sure it's on the non-sharp edges now similarly with the wood screws if you're again if your tree is a weird angle say you've got a say you're wrapping something like at a weird angle like this and you just can't quite get your pro to stay in place or it's like just like a really awkward angle and it's wanting to twist because that'll sometimes happen I'll sometimes use these wood screws to actually secure the wood pro which is these guys onto the tree now that just depends um, there are many different ways, different reasons why you might use these. I've built steps into trees using blocks like this and I've secured those with wood screws. Just a good thing to have, you know, if you're ever building a tree net, you never know what kind of challenges you might encounter. Be prepared. Now that we have everything we need, let's actually go and build our tree net. But before we continue guys, I really quickly wanted to give a huge shout out and personal thank you to all my patrons. You guys are the best. So far via Patreon, we have made $126 with 91 cents, and all of those funds are gonna go back into improving this channel. As a quick example, we can go from a video like this to a video like that. Now, I have more updates on that coming later. Drop down in the comments if you wanna hear about that stuff on the channel or not. That's up to you guys. Anyway, go check out the Patreon, guys. I made some new tiers with very easy to follow perks and all that good stuff. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Now another thing, if this video reaches 500 likes on the first week it's posted, I'm gonna give away another 10 by 10 by 10 space net for you and your friends to hang out on at the park or in your backyard or really anywhere you want. All you have to do, hit the like button down below guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that, and hit that little notification bell down below so you don't miss when I post. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so now we're ready to build. We're gonna first look at our trees and see how we wanna design this. I'm not gonna go too in depth on my creative process here, but my net on these particular trees isn't gonna be flat, horizontal with the ground. I'm gonna make it actually a slight slope, both for aesthetically pleasing views from when you walk into this house here, and also so that when people are laying on it, they're at a very slight angle, which I think will be more comfortable than just being flat on the on the thing and it'll also make it easier to see the views because there's often a lot of people that are playing here there's a there's a slack line right behind the cameras here that you can't see but I want people to to be able to enjoy the view over here and be able to climb up and stuff this might have a second story that gets added to it in the future there's a lot of thought that goes into this but we're gonna go ahead 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna install the lag screws and I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like when I'm done. And like I said, guys, for that we need our drill, the screws themselves, and then something to torque them in. So let's go ahead and do that. So our tree net is actually gonna go this way, which means I'm gonna be placing the bolt on this end of the tree. Okay, so hole is in. Now we're gonna take our lag screw as shown earlier, and you'll notice, this is actually kind of an important note. You'll notice that this guy's got, uh, it's just kind of open. You, it, you want this open side to be on the top. You could have it on the bottom, but if there it was ever enough load to open this up, it would open and fail. Whereas if it was like this, it's actually a little bit stronger. If you see that? So make sure that open weld is on the top when you're done installing it. I'm gonna go ahead and install this one and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that my rope is all threaded through the lag bolts, before I install my spacers, I'm gonna put just a small amount of tension on the static rope, so that way it can have just enough tension for me to be able to pull it away from the tree, slide all my spacers in, and have the rope itself hold the spacers there. And when everything's set in place and perfect, just the way we want it, we're gonna go ahead and do that final crank of tension on the static rope. So let's go do that and I'll show you what the spacers on the trees are supposed to look like when installed. All the wood spacers are installed. You can see that the rope doesn't touch the tree anywhere. This is exactly what we want. This is beautiful. Now we're gonna add the final tension to the rope. Personally, I like to crank it to about a thousand pounds, give or take. That way when we start weaving, it doesn't bend in a whole lot and we don't lose a ton of surface area. Keep in mind, you're gonna get a little more tension on this when you start weaving, and you gotta make sure your trees can handle that. Now, all of our trees here are hardwood, and they're very sturdy. You wanna make sure you're using something good. All right, and now that we have the desired tension that we want on our rope, we're gonna go ahead and remove these pulleys entirely from the system. Now, before you remove the pulleys, you need to tie a knot to join the ends of your rope together. You can do many different knots here. I think the barrel knot, the double fisherman's or something like that is the most aesthetic looking one and not to mention it is bomber. I'm actually going to thread a second rope through all of these bolts for redundancy and do the exact same process you just saw. Voila guys, that is how you rig a tree net. Thank you guys so much for watching. On the next video, I'll be showing a little bit more of the skeleton and how you want to structure that so you can make sure you're 100% ready to weave. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hit that little notification bell so you don't miss when I post the next video. I'll see you guys on the next one.